do you find like so the the gist of like my podcast here, quote unquote, is I I, I call it cutting through. Uh-huh. It's like I want to help people cut through the bullshit. Like we all know there's a ton of it out there, yep. um, especially in the music marketing like channel. Okay. Um, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of managers or marketing people or you know gurus. There, I think there's a lot of people out there who even if they have good intentions are like leading artists astray a little bit and just kind of like, oh, all you need to do is this one little trick and here you go, like get it in my master class. Um, what is something that like you see now that you've, you've like dove into this social media world and content and you must be seeing a lot of other people making similar content. What is some of like the bullshit that you see uh, from manager perspective? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things I try and like tell people to help cut through that bullshit and I see a lot is people are saying things and they haven't had the experience to back up what they're saying. So they're just kind of like regurgitating what they've heard. And then you're playing the telephone game because every time you say it, you're changing it slightly at some point. So I always say like, look at the source, like who is giving you the information? Because if they have a resume where they have worked with labels and they have worked in whatever your niche is and whatever you need help in, like, yeah, they're good people to work with. If they've been successful, like follow them. And there are a lot of people there, but there's a whole lot more who are just repeating that. And that message again, like changes a little bit every time. And also like, I don't want to listen to you about releasing music. If you haven't released music, you just don't know it. Like you can't know it as well as someone who's done it. So look at the source. I think that's really important. What are some things that like, if you're trying to help an artist say, find a qualified or a good manager, like, what are some of the things that you would maybe tell an artist, hey, okay, look, a good manager has generally these three things going? Okay, that's a really good question. Like, what's a good manager? I would look for someone who continues to stay like relevant in what's happening with social media because things are constantly changing. Like algorithms are constantly changing purposely, like every few months. So if you're not continually monitoring that, you're going to be outdated so quickly on the marketing side. And social media is like so underrated right now for, for artists to use. So I'd say someone who watches that and has an ear for that is really important because it keeps you relevant. I would also say someone who's organized, managers are organizing your company you as an artist are a company and they're essentially organizing you so that is a really good skill to have and i would say someone who you work well with and you like how they deliver messages because they're guiding you and going to tell you hard things they're going to tell you exciting things and it's not always going to be easy so someone that you like can vibe with in a, in a way and feel safe with. Cause I think, gosh, we talk about like mental health a lot for artists, but on the team side, right. It's really important that you have a safety net in your team for, for that. So I think those are three things that are important to look for in managers. Cool. What do you I think, think? Those are all key. Yeah. That's a good question. Well, I, the third one is what struck me the most where like, I really think I'll, Say you've got the first two boxes checked, but just for some reason, it's just not a good fit. Like the fit is so important because I think with anything in the music industry, there's no one right way to do pretty much anything. Um, A lot of like what a manager in my perspective, like is kind of there to help the artist do is find what works best for them. And lead the artist on this experiment of sorts and be willing to kind of swing and miss a few times in order to find what does work best for this artist. And like a really good manager might have 10 different clients and like they're not using the exact same recipe for each one, especially say if I've got one artist who's a country artist and the other one is a hip hop artist. You can't just use the same recipe again and again. So like that goes part with what you said, they have to be able to adapt 
because mm -hmm. breaking an artist 18 months ago and breaking an artist now are two very different ball games. Um, so I do think there's a lot of folks out there that I see uh, online who are like are trying to market themselves as a manager or, or something to help an artist and it's like they have something where like oh yeah I worked at Def Jam in 1999 like I am therefore a good source now um, do you yeah. like what are some things that maybe you can look for because like working at Def Jam could mean like you were the president or maybe you were the janitor and not to knock those jobs but just like you know, working at Def Jam in and of itself doesn't mean that you're going to be an amazing manager. Yeah. And something that I have learned to ask, which I used to not because I was like unsure, like, is this an okay question to ask? But I ask people now what their network is if we're kind of going into a business transaction. And I think that's a responsible question to ask. And I think one of the things I, like you said, there's no right way to do anything, especially now in like the business world as it is, you can be so creative and do like, I never knew before because I was like, not an entrepreneur. Like you can carve out your business any way you want. There are so many ways to make money. That being said, but I will ask, like, who do you regularly work with? Um, because I think it is if they if they say, oh yeah, like I used to work at Sony and now I work here, or like yeah, but I'm really good friends with you know Sirius XM or whatnot. Like those are really advantageous relationships, and that's enticing in a business transaction. Um, and I believe in transparency in business. Like I think, like why not? Like that's. It's kind of like so many people are secretive with like how to do things and it's like just mm -hmm. be transparent like you can buy this service. This is the cost of it. Like it makes it so much clearer and I think yeah. we're getting to a consumption part, you know what I mean, in our culture where people want that transparency. So when like looking to see qualifications, I just kind of ask people now, like straight up, like what's your network? Like who do you regularly work with? Tell me about what you've done in the last like year. Um, and I also kind of time frame it too. Like what have you done in the past year? Do you, are your connections still relevant? Cause you're right. There's so many people, especially I feel like, um, ooh, not to bash radio, but I feel like a lot of radio connections are like um, very like, oh yeah, I worked here, so, you know what I mean? I'm like, well, yeah, but there's like, the been through like three different program directors. Like your connections aren't relevant anymore. Um, and I think it can help people save money if they're paying for a service and someone's connections aren't relevant to their niche or their genre. I think that's something to look for too, is are there, is their background relevant to your genre? Yeah, now, I think you're totally right where like, folks like this, especially in the music space, are trying to kind of up, you know, make themselves look better. Yeah. And I think instead, if they were just straightforward and said, hey, yeah, I worked at Sirius XM 10 years ago. Yes, I, I'm sure the industry has changed, but I do have some insight to offer. Right away, now it's not so shady. You're not trying to, it's not defensive. You still have expertise. It might be like, it might not be from yesterday, which is okay, but instead of just kind of laying it out like it is, they filter it with a bunch of bullshit about how their Dr. Dre's cousin or their neighbor works at Interscope or, oh, I did a song with Waka Flocka in 2002. <laughs> and like, so it's like there is a lot of em embellishment, exaggeration, and, and I think especially in the music space, and instead of trying to, because as soon as somebody finds out that you're a little bit full of shit, they don't believe anything you're saying. And if like this, this made up manager in my mind was more like, yeah, I used to know this person. I've met a few times. He gave me some good advice, but just like giving it to him straight instead of being like, oh, this will make me feel cool and look better. He'll think I'm a better manager because I bumped into 50 cent once on the, at the airport. <laughs> like, you know? Transparency is so important for like building relationships. And I think of like, that's essentially like what you want in the music industry is relationships, but you're right. It's so full of bullshit. And I can't even tell you the crazy shit people have told me like, oh, well, like, yeah, my song, they, they wanted to sign it. It was being considered for, and I'm like, okay, well that tells like, it wasn't good enough. <laughs> like they didn't want it. Like, right. I, I, <laughs> 
you know what I mean? Like in this, like yeah. I almost got chosen for the travel sports team. Like it doesn't, you didn't do it. Like don't leave your pitch with that. <laughs> pitch yourself yeah. in another way. 